Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the back pages. We've missed it for a couple of weeks now uh, due to the fact of the game's been played on uh, weirder times and things happening. You know, it's just been a bit hard to try and find a time to do it, but we're going to do it again today. And if you've never watched it before, quite simply put, it's the series where we react and give our opinions to everything that's in the back pages of those Monday morning newspapers in the world of Scottish football. Basically me digesting it, giving my point of view on it all and then... Moving on, it's, it's quite pointless when you think about it, but um, people seem to enjoy it, so here we go. Very quickly before we go on to the video, make sure to check out the top line of the description and check out the One Football app. The One Football app will give you everything you need to know in terms of what's happening in the world of football, both Scotland and England and anywhere else in the world really. Look at fixtures, live news, scores, everything that you'll need all in the one place and by downloading it through my link in the top line of the description you're helping both me and the channel sponsors out. So please make sure to check that out, it's in the top line of the description. Right then, uh, thank you very much, may I just say, on the feedback to yesterday's episode of the Selic the Thunder. We've brought it back, the podcast series is back in the channel. The first episode went down fantastic. It's the second most viewed video that I've done in my last ten, uh, behind the instant reaction to the old form. Um, you know, it's went down great and the, the comments have been amazing as well. It's also on Spotify if anybody wants to listen there. They will be back and I'm looking forward to getting the series up and running. Especially when we can do it properly <coughs> in a studio type environment rather than through Zoom. But of course, we've just entered another lockdown uh, today. The news has just broke moments ago that we're going back into a March type lockdown. So things are going to be a little bit different. Still waiting to see how it will affect football. And how it will affect Celtic as they have their trip in Dubai. And a lot of people will be clicking on this video uh, to hear my opinions towards that. And I am I'm, I'm quite livid, to be honest. And we'll talk about that before we get into uh, the back pages of the newspapers. So the big story for me doesn't make the back pages of the Express at all. And I don't think it does in the Daily Record either. And that, to me, is quite uh, weird because I thought it would be everywhere. In the back pages of the newspapers today, the photos that were getting shown and everything. Of course, fans of other clubs won't care as much as, say, the fans of Celtic. But the photos have emerged of the Celtic team over in Dubai, having a pint, having a wee cheeky fag, you know, all these different things. It's, it's, they've all came out, uh, Neil Lennon, Scott Brown sitting by the pool looking like they're having the time of their lives. You know, the rest of the team sitting in the bar and such, a, a nice wee trip away, a week away in the sun. Um, while we're also 19 points behind in the league. Um, look, a lot of people will be using the debate against this as uh, a lot of people who are wanting to be on the side of us getting a break will be saying, oh, you know, they deserve it. You know, they've been working hard. It's been a tough time they're working through. We get it every year. Uh, football deserves a drink, for God's sakes. The difference between now and any other time is we are 19 points behind in the league and our board and our manager feel like we should be rewarding the team with trips away to Dubai, where we should be going to train, and we are training, fair enough, we are going to train, but we're having this happen, we are 19 points behind the league, we have just lost a derby game, which is basically defined what is going to happen come the end of the season, we are out of every competition that we've entered so far in the 2020-21 campaign, it has been a disaster, and this is the images we have to see, and somebody put it very well on Twitter yesterday, but there is your advert for your next season, for your win when you're wanting to pay £500 for a season ticket, and honestly, it makes me wonder whether or not I should renew my season ticket, knowing that this is the way that the board are running the team. Uh, look, I'm never going to turn away from being a Celtic fan, I'm never going to turn my back on Celtic, but it just seems like a kick in the, kick in the balls. Um, when you've been paying the money this season to watch the games from home, and you're watching a team who are doing terribly, that, uh, bottom line, terribly, when you watch them getting rewarded like that, um, it's annoying and of course it's, uh, there's an even bigger question mark that surrounds it all and when it comes to how this kind of affects the rest of the league and you know St Mirren and Kilmartin and all the rest of them are getting punished for sitting beside each other on buses and all the rest of it yet we're away over to Dubai so it's just a big overwhelming question mark that now surrounds the the kind of state of the league and where we are now in, in, in terms of um, the board and everything else and then also our relationship with the, the kind of SFA and how this is all, it's just a massive blunder, I think, on, on everybody's part, the SFA and Celtics, to allow this to go forward. Um, but and from a point of view of a Celtic fan, I'm just kind of livid that it's, it's actually happening. And I don't, I just, I'm running out of patience and, and sort of tolerance to, to listen to the, 
the continuous defence of the actions uh, on and off the park of Celtic this season. You know, I, I've been fed up of hearing the same arguments about Lennon in, never mind anything else. Um, but that's another level. But the back pages of the paper, we'll move on to that. And I'm sure it's, once again, it's an issue that's going to divide a lot of the, the Celtic support. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to see uh, a hint of that in the comments. A hint is an, an understatement. I'm going to see a lot of that in the comments section. A lot of people will be saying, Ryan, blah, blah, blah. And they, they won't like my opinion at all. But I think a lot of the, the, the people who have been on my sort of same side of the fence all season, uh, we will we'll feel the same about this. And there will be people who are, are saying, oh, there's nothing wrong with it. We've done it with Rodgers and Charles and all the rest of it. But it's not the point. Now more than ever, when we're 19 points behind, there should be a, a serious change of tone at the club. Um, it's just it's just a joke to me, and I know people won't agree, but everybody's entitled to an opinion, I suppose. Daily Record back page is still talking about the derby on Saturday, of course. Um, the headline, we played you off the park and the title race isn't over yet. David Turnbull insists Celtic will fight until the bitter end. In the title race, despite defeat by Rangers leaving them trailing their rivals by a whopping 19 points, the midfielder vowed the champions won't let their heads drop after, uh, <coughs> having suffered a real blow to their 10 in a row hopes after Cal McGregor's own goal sent them crashing to defeat at Ibrooks. Neil Lennon's men will spend this week in Dubai at a warm-up weather training camp to pre prepare for the second half of the season and Turnbull is targeting a winning run that can hold them back into the Premiership hunt. Celtic star Turnbull insists 10 in a row bid still not dead. Well, it's nice to see you know the likes of Turnbull Believing, um, I think we've left it a little too late, and I feel bad for David Turnbull, of course, who could have had a far bigger say than and where we are at this point of the season. You know, the fact he's having to hit out with interviews like this uh, in January after only getting about a month of football uh, is shambolic because we know he should have been in the team from the start of the season. Um, but it's nice to see him believe. I don't know if it's going to rub off on the rest of the team. Um, but I so uh, when you open up inside, Lenny, bl Lenny blamed the, the ref for defeat. But he didn't pay £2 million for Duffy alone and £5 million for Barkas. Keith Jackson. Season has been a series of bad bets by champions, but there's no need to gamble on a new boss to now. Um, Barkas, no save pair of hands um, by uh, Michael Stewart talking here. He says, the missed struggle on Barkas, a keeper who doesn't make saves. Look, it's a point they're talking talk about, of course, the £5 million here for Barkas. Uh, and Michael Stewart making that comment there. Look, I will wholeheartedly agree that Barkas hasn't turned out to be the signing that I think a lot of Celtic fans would have hoped he would have been. Um, I think that he has been, yes, below average. He struggled to make a save. But the, 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 it's an agenda at this point. It honestly is. And I'm seeing the same points as well on Twitter. And it's, it's good to know that there's other people in the same boat as me. Look, I have been on this channel and I've slated Barkas for some of his performances. There is, I'm not going to hide away from that. I've said that he, he's as good as a, a, an amputee um, at points. He's, you know, his hands are just not there. But the way that people are going on and on and on about him is generally an agenda at this point. Because there was nothing he could do to save that on Saturday. Absolutely nothing. No keeper was saving that on Saturday. Fraser Foster, Iker Casillas or Jesus Christ himself was not saving that on Saturday. It was an error from a Celtic player that went beyond Barkas at the last second. He was not expecting that. So let's be honest for a minute, let's be genuinely serious and think about the fact that that was never going to be changed by any other keeper. That was always going in and the, the abuse that Barkas has been receiving for it I think is very unjust and I will once again reiterate that I don't think he has been good enough this season but after that on Saturday and seeing the abuse that was getting piled onto him by certain sections of the support and the media and everything else, there was, no, there was nothing that could have made him save that, absolutely nothing. It would have been a medical so it is weird um and finally we'll, we'll move on because I've, I've spoke quite a bit in this video mostly about the dubai stuff and I, I did want to touch on that but the daily express is back page quite an odd quite an odd back page but um gerard can be the new clock uh, Gavin Berry, Liverpool legend Phil Thompson has tipped Rangers boss Steven Gerrard to succeed Jurgen Klopp at Anfield when the German quits the English champions. Um, I mean, I, I prefer not to speak to <laughs> you, I'm joking. Look, <clears throat> Gerrard has undoubtedly came up to Scotland, made Rangers a better side. He's now very much on track to, to go and win their first league title. 
Um, and you know what, the, the talk was always he was up here till he could get the Liverpool job until now at this point i never seen him as someone who was good enough to, to take the Liverpool job or, or, or succeed Jurgen Klopp um, I thought it would be a tremendous step backwards for Liverpool I still don't think he's quite at that stage yet I think he's got to do something more um, what you do realise we're talking about Liverpool at the minute and that's not me before Rangers fans start jumping down my throat and saying I'm dismissing any sort of credit of, of Gerrard There's no, I'm not denying that he's, he's not done a good job and I'm not denying he's not a, a decent manager that's, that's not what I'm saying I just think people like Thompson here are forgetting the, the age of football we are now at and how far ahead Liverpool are on the stage at the minute. Liverpool are probably by miles the best club, well, best club in England, most certainly. And they're up there with Bayern Munich, perhaps, as the best club in Europe. Um, I know Atletico knocked them out of the Champions League last year, and you don't have to remind me, but I think Liverpool are right now the kind of... Uh, them and Bayern are the kind of setting the bar in, in, in continental football uh, across Europe. I think they are, they are, they are, they are the bar. Um, and for Gerrard... Or for Liverpool to go from Jurgen Klopp, who has revolutionised the game for Liverpool and who has turned them into Premier League winners for the first time in 30 years, turned them into consistent Champions League challengers, um, to go from that to then step to someone who is not really proven it in a bigger stage yet, I, I think it would be quite the risk. And there's no denying, Gerrard could walk in with the, the, the players at the disposal he would have at Liverpool and the money and, and do a good job. I think a lot of managers would be able to. I think you could give um, Sam Allardyce a job at Liverpool for God's sake and with that money and such, he'd be able to do a decent job. But I just think with the way the world, the, the, the landscape of football has changed, for, for Gerrard to be the next cop, I think is a bit premature. I think the claims are a bit bold. And that's just my opinion. I'm not saying one day he won't go on to manage other people or he won't go on to become one of the best managers. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, but right now, I just feel like it is a bit too... It's a bit too premature for my liking. Uh, and of course, if David Turnbull's got anything to say about it, the league's not done. <laughs> but look, look, the league is realistically done, isn't it? Um, but there you go, I see other story in the back page of the Express today. It is about David Turnbull. It is about what he's saying in regards to the title challenge. And that's it. That is my, my opinions to the back pages on uh, Monday, the 4th of January. The first issue of 2021, I should say, of the back pages. And I'm destroying the papers here. My dad's going to be absolutely fuming. Um, let me know your opinions in the comments below. Is Gerard the new cop? What do you make of Celtic's trip? to Dubai, everything in the comments below and I'll see you all next time.